بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر اور تیدائی ویڈ لیکچر نمبر ون آف وٹ آف دی الیکٹرانک ڈیوائس ان سرکٹس یو یو گاہ دی پریویس ویڈیو یو یو شوڈ ایو واشت ایٹ اوکی بیکاز دی انٹرڈکٹری ویڈیو 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 ڈیزائن دی کورس کانٹنٹس اور وی گو ان پراپر آرڈر سو دیٹ ایز ویڈی ویڈی نیسیسری تو انڈسٹینڈ دی آرڈر آف دی کورس فائن سو لیٹس سی وی سٹارٹ ویڈی انٹرڈکشن پارٹ آف ایٹ We, we, we start what with the introduction to the to the semiconductors fine so please get a heading semiconductor devices right so to discuss semiconductor devices what are semiconductor devices you have to do you, you, you divide a material into three types into three categories based on their conductivity level fine so let's say we keep writing on the board so the types of materials the types of materials Based on what? Based on their conductivity level, okay? Okay, so the number one would be what? Number one would be a conductor. And the, the second would be an insulator. And finally, the third, that would be a semiconductor. Is it fine? Yes, it is. So this is based on their conductivity level, based on their conduction level. The amount of current that it will let pass through it. Fine. Uh, otherwise, we have a we have a classification of materials based on the the structure, crystalline, uh, amorphous, pseudo crystalline. That is not our concern over here. Our concern is this thing. Fine. So now you guys know very well, but this is just. To, to, to start things up, we need an introduction, right? So, a conductor is what it would allow a generous flow of current through it, right? A generous flow of current through it. When, when a voltage source is applied across it. Fine. Similarly, the insulator is an exact opposite. The insulator, what? It will block all the flow of current. Which means no current can flow through the insulator when a voltage is applied to it. So the voltage is of course the, 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 what, the condition when a voltage is applied. Where the semiconductor, if you talk about the semiconductor, so this is the thing that lies in between. The, the properties lie in between the conductor and insulator. Which means what? It would let some of the current pass and, and not let all of it pass. So which means the conductivity is more than the insulator and it's less than the conductor. Right? So conductivity is more than insulator but less than conductor it lies in between the two so if you have some examples so of course you know for for uh, conductor you could have the most common examples are copper or aluminum mostly used in the transmission line designs right copper and aluminum Fine. And similarly for insulators you could have uh, wood, wood is, is your uh, a common uh, uh, insulator and a mica, mica is a scientific example let's say. Uh, this is used for thermal and electrical insulations, this substance mica. Okay. Semiconductors. So semiconductor we have devices like uh, uh, elements like germanium, silicon, and gallium arsenide these are the elements this only compound the most important the three most important that we would mainly be focusing on in this course silicon germanium and gallium arsenide is that fine till here so we're talking about the resistivity and the conductivity levels so what is resistivity resistivity is the opposition to what to the flow of charges. Resistivity is opposition no, to the flow of current, right? So which means what? This is going to be the inverse of the conductivity. Where conductivity is what? Conductivity is the, is the ability 
to conduct current right so which means you have this is if rho if this is rho so rho is inversely proportional to your sigma rho is inversely proportional to sigma we've got we've got some values over here this is fixed for every material right so if resistivity is high current is low and you know this very well resistivity high current is low so so, so we're not interested in that so for conductors and for copper if i say so for copper the value of resistivity is 10 to the power negative 6 ohm meter for copper for copper we have the resistivity value equal to 10 to the power negative 6 ohm meter which is a very very small value right similarly then if we talk for insulators for mica it is 10 to the power 12 ohm meters for mica the rho is 10 to the power 12 ohm meters and have a look at the difference please you can observe the difference now for the semiconductors it would be less than 10 to the power 12 but of course it would be greater than 10 to the power 10 minus 6 so if i have an example for silicon it's uh, 50 into 10 to the power 3 for silicon silicon has a resistivity of 50 into 10 to the power 3 ohm meters and, and i'm also having value of germanium so for germanium it's 50 ohms meter for germanium it's 50 ohm meters so from this you can guess very well have a look a very uh, low value of resistance offered a very high value of resistance offered and an in between an intermediate value of resistance offered to what to the flow of current when a voltage is applied across the device is that fine till here it is so uh, the book has uh, you know the the what some and of course the conductivity of the semiconductors can be changed and this, will, this is what we will discuss later on so the conductivity of, of, of a conductor is fixed of an, of an insulator is fixed but for semiconductor it could be changed and how so by the process of doping which we will discuss in a great detail in the upcoming videos for now you have to just uh, read down the book what does it say the introduction uh, you can you can use, you can just see it yourself the first ic was developed by jack kilby in 1958 today the intel core i7 uh, processor has 731 million transistors on a single chip and this and that semiconductor is a special class of elements having conductivity between that a conductor and insulator okay it may be a single crystal or compound now what is a crystal so when you have a you have a repetition you have a repetition so when you have a single so wait i'm coming to that i will come to that okay so the discovery of diode was uh, occurred in 1939 uh, similarly the ability to temperature and this and that and sensitive issues of speed so silicon is still the fundamental block of intel's new line of processors so let's say we talk about the covalent bonding and intrinsic materials. So the fundamental components of an atom, electron and neutron in lattice structure, neurons and protons are present in the nucleus. Let's talk about silicon, germanium and gallium arsenide. So silicon and germanium are group four elements. Silicon and germanium are group four elements of the periodic table which means what they have got four valence electrons and valence electrons are what the electrons that lie in the outermost shell silicon has an atomic number of 14 whereas germanium has 32 silicon has 14 and this has 32 so which means what both of them need if they are four valence electrons so they need four more to complete their octet fine so let's say we, we we draw a structure and the structure is what if this is the nucleus of a of a silicon atom so you have two electrons in the first shell you have eight electrons in the second one two three four five six seven and eight so how much it becomes ten right and if it becomes ten so this uh, four more right so we have one we have two we have three and we have four so now what do we need we need four more electrons 
so if we need four more electrons so it will it will it will bond it will make a bond with what with four more silicon atoms so so let's say this is another silicon atom having two in the first shell uh, and eight in the second shell let's say two let's say eight and having four in the last shell so if this is uh, you know you have a four electrons so this one would make a covalent bond with this one Similarly over here another silicon atom with come having two electrons in the first shell having eight electrons in the next and having four in the last shell so this will make a bond with this one. Similarly from this side silicon having two in the first shell eight in the second shell and the other the last four in the last shell so now what will happen this will make a bond with this one and similarly one would come from this side two eight and 14 so so have a look we were we were talking about we, were, we have to concentrate on the blue atom we have to concentrate on the blue atom so have a look now does it have eight electrons in the valence shell right yes the octet is complete yes octet rule is satisfied yes so this is now this now has the noble gas atomic configuration is that fine till here it is so this one thing one pattern like this one pattern this is called a a, a crystal right one pattern like this the, the where the bonding is shown so this one pattern is called your crystal but of course this would not be a one pattern now this one this one has to have three more uh, bonds so over here we would have three more silicon atoms similarly for this we would have three more similarly for this we would have three more for this we would have three more so which means and then for the next we would have three more so this system would repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat so the repetition of this crystal when you have more crystals you have more patterns so you this multiple crystals would be called what multiple crystals so the overall structure the overall structure is called a lattice and i hope you have understood it similarly would be the case for germanium right uh, it again has four valent electrons so four would come to each side and then that one thing would be called a crystal and then when it would repeat on either side so the overall structure repeated 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 again and again would be called a lattice for germanium as well this is the case similarly if we if we talk about gallium and arsenic so gallium has atomic number 31 gallium has atomic number 31 and uh, arsenic has atomic number 33 arsenic has atomic number 33 so gallium is in, in the group 3 of the periodic table group 3 and arsenic has the atomic number 33 which means it has five valence electrons so it is located in the group 5 of the periodic table is it clear till here it is so now we were talking about the gallium arsenide and is it the symbol the symbol should be as i believe the symbol is as as it is yes as it is so now what would happen so so i would also show you another shorthand notation first so if you have this thing uh, arsenic so what do you do you write arsenic and you only draw the valence electrons so which are what which are how many which are five so you have one valence electron you have the second valence electron you have the third you have the fourth and you have the fifth so we have five valence electrons right so now what would happen we would uh, have to complete the octet of it so the structure is given in the book so let me draw it from here a, a, a gallium atom would come from this side a gallium atom would come from this side right so you have one is complete it needs three more right so similarly 
a gallium would come from this side right uh, and we have for all of it we, we have the gallium and some arsenic and so you draw it yourself please i will try to paste a picture from the book directly so this would be the structure of it now what happens when you have only one sort of a material as we discussed over here saying uh, silicon so this is called a single crystal i believe and when you have multiple things over here you have an arsenic you have a gallium so for this this is called a compound crystal this is called a compound crystal let me read out something from the book what does the book say Silicon has 14 orbiting electrons, germanium 32, this and that. The term valence is used to indicate the ionization required to remove any of these electrons from the atomic structure is relatively lower than that to require. So we will we'll discuss it in the next video. The bonding of atoms strengthened by the shearing of electrons is called what? It's called the, the covalent bonding, right? Covalent bound, gallium arsenide is a compound semiconductor, okay? So you have the two different atoms. Okay. The, there is still sharing of electron, but now five electrons are provided by arsenic and three are provided by gallium atom. So if I draw the structure uh, like this, in this sort of a way, so you have five valence electrons in one and you have three valence electrons in the other. So I believe that would be simple enough. If you have uh, arsenic, arsenic, so let's say I draw the valence shell only. So if this is the valence shell, it has five electrons, four and, and five. So it now needs three more electrons. So. Uh, so a gallium atom would come near to it, a gallium atom and it has three valence electrons. So have a look, when it shares these electrons, when it shares these electrons, let's say a bond is formed between these two, let's say a bond is formed between these two and let's say a bond is formed between these two. So have a look, now uh, arsenic has got 8, gallium has got 8. So this is the structure. By the way, the proper structure I like to, I try to paste a photo over here from the book. So this is the thing you need to understand how it happens. It, it has to complete the octet, right? By, by having what? 8 electrons in the valence shell. Okay. Okay. So we have these uh, two more points. The first is of a relative mobility. Relative mobility. So what is relative mobility? This is the, the speed of the free electron to move inside the lattice. What is the free electron? So let's say if I have what? If some thermal energy is applied, uh, it absorbs heat from the surrounding or light energy in, the, in, in, in terms of photon is applied. So what happens is that the bonded electron can break the covalent bond and get out of the lattice. And what will happen? It is relatively free. It has not gained such an energy to move outside the lattice, but sufficient energy to be relatively free inside the lattice. So the speed of that, the speed of that electron is called relative mobility. We've got the values over here for relative mobility. For silicon, it's 1500. The units, of course, you can just check out by yourself. For silicon, it's 1500. For germanium, it's 3900. For gallium arsenide, it's 8500. Fine. So this is your uh, your what? Your relative mobility. The ability of free carriers to move to move throughout the materials. So so gallium arsenide has got the most speed, right? Okay. The other thing is intrinsic conductors, intrinsic carriers. So what is intrinsic carriers? Intrinsic carriers. 
So what are intrinsic carriers? So the free electrons in the material due to external causes are referred as intrinsic carriers. So intrinsic are again these free electrons but what? But due to the the external causes that is heat or the application of any external energy in terms of light or heat and they are represented by an n subscript i fine and the values are given as well over here for for, for gallium arsenide they are the least let me write them with another color so let's say if i write n i so for gallium arsenide you've got 1.7 and 10 to the power 6 they are given in the book. For silicon, they are 1.5 in 10 to the power 10. And for germanium, they are 2.5 into 10 to the power 13. Right? Yes. Now, so by adding an impurity, we can change the property of a material from a relatively poor conductor to a good conductor of electricity. This is what I said. This is called doping. We will discuss. Now, when we apply heat, when we apply a heat to a material, and what happens that the resistance increases with heat. So let's say we discuss it in the next uh, uh, in the next thing, because then the video is getting longer. Anyways, so let's say I finish this video over here. See you in the next one very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care of yourselves, everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Goodbye.